Darkness. Well, a man who knows this all too well. Wow, great to have him part of our coverage today. Chris Hatfield, retired Canadian astronaut, the first Canadian commander of the International Space Station. Boy, what must be going through your mind today, Chris? Uh, Todd, uh, all the things I've done, this is the very first time I've seen uh, a total solar eclipse. So I'm super excited. The, the little boy in me is just thrilled to be here in a place in Canada on Earth, one of those places you just mentioned where you get complete darkness and, and uh, three minutes and 20 seconds or so where I'm in New Brunswick. So I'm, I'm really happy about it. Yeah, you're in Carleton North, so you're in a great spot and we know it's sunny out as well. So that's going to really help. You know, Chris, you have been a witness to the cosmos and the power of it, and you have, you know, such a unique experience, something that most of us here on Earth never get to experience. This is an opportunity, though, for millions of people to just kind of see the power, the majesty of it. Yeah, I think it, it uh, strikes people at a lot of different levels. Number one is it's just so rare. I mean, if you and I stood on the banks of the St. John here, Todd, it would be on average 375 years between solar eclipses. So that hardly even makes it into the folklore of oral histories. And the last one was before Jacques Cartier sailed up the St. Lawrence River. And the next one's not for like 181 years. So, so there's that rareness, but it's also just inherently beautiful. It's an artistic, natural thing happening up in the sky. And you can see parts of the sun and maybe you can see Mercury and Jupiter and Saturn and, and uh, and Venus, I think, are right close, maybe even a comet when the sky gets dark. And then the last piece for me that's exciting is it's so scientifically revealing parts of the sun that cause the northern lights and that occasionally cause big power disruptions. We can see them with our naked eye. So that that trifecta of all those things happening at once, it's just uh, very eye catching. And what's going to go through your mind, Chris, when you step out of, of the room you're in and you're sort of watching it in the next, uh, let's say, two hours or so? Um, I practiced yesterday. Astronauts practice. That's what we do. We get ready. And so I know all my equipment's going to work. And I got good glasses. So all that's going to work. So what I want to do is just open myself up to the experience and not spend a lot of time, you know, fumbling with a camera or something. I want to uh, just be relaxed uh, and letting myself notice all the fine nuances as the sun gets more and more covered that moment where the edges of the sun are just getting covered so you can maybe see what looks like a big diamond ring in the sky and then the revealing of the corona as the rods and cones adjust like i was saying um, and then listen to how it affects nature how the animals and and everything around me reacts how the temperature changes in my part of the country and then watch the reverse of all those things happen. So I, I'm, I'm ready for the whole thing. And I've been thinking about it my whole life. So I'm really happy that it's such a beautiful sunny day in, uh, in this part of uh, New Brunswick. Some people, uh, Chris, see this as almost a you know spiritual experience. Your thoughts on that? I'm living on board a spaceship, um, there's sort of this common meme of what people call the overview effect, where suddenly you get beyond your normal life, something there's, it's bigger than you. You get a sense, not just of beauty, but of time and history and, and the enormity of everything else. And that's what this event is like as well for a lot of people. You can get so wrapped up in your day to day that it's hard to get a perspective. But as you were showing those clips from Mexico, this is one of those rare moments when millions and millions of people stop with all the daily hubbub and look up in wonder. And I'm just one of those people. It brings. It also brings people together, Chris, doesn't it? From all walks of life. You know, we're we're looking at you know a million people or so in Niagara Falls. There's people in Hamilton, Fort Erie, New Brunswick, where you are. You know, uh, I've got friends in Montreal waiting to go outside in the next uh, you know hour and a half, two hours to witness it as well. And you know, throughout parts of Newfoundland and even a, a small chunk of Prince Edward Island. It's a unifying event, naturally. It's, uh, it's something that is so much physically bigger than all of us as this, what is it, about 250 kilometers wide, the little shadow of totality goes from the coast of Mexico at 2,500 kilometers an hour, racing across the continent. And it almost like, like a wave, you know, when you're at an arena and everyone does the wave, there's this 
this wave of attention of millions of people across a very heavily populated part of the world, as you say, right up to the to the edge of Newfoundland. And uh, and so, yeah, there's a sense of community of sharing something rare and inherently beautiful and scientifically interesting. And, and I think it's good for us all to occasionally be unified in something magnificent like that. Well said, Chris Hadfield. Astronaut, first Canadian commander of the International Space Station. He is in New Brunswick today to witness firsthand the totality of the solar eclipse. Great to see you as always, Chris. Thanks for taking time for CTV. All right. Don't, don't forget to go outside and look up. <laughs> All right. I'll be in the studio, actually. I wish I could.